Newtonian mechanics is foundational to physics. Modern science really is thought to spring from Newton's ideas. It was believed that using his laws, one can predict the motions of systems if you know the interactions between them. The idea of the clockwork universe sort of evolved from that. And for simple mechanical systems, that's true, but not necessarily true. It was only appreciated uh, around 1900 by the great French theorist uh, Henri Poincaré, who discovered that there are some systems which are unpredictable. You cannot solve them mathematically. If you try to predict the future mathematically, you find that the system just behaves wildly. Behaving wildly means that if you change the initial conditions of the system sort of infinitesimally, you get a totally different answer. For well-behaved systems, if you change the conditions a little bit, the motion will be a little bit different. He discovered systems for which you change the initial conditions a little bit, the motion is totally different. His discovery really was left um, unfulfilled, the, the, the promise of this new subject, um, until the 1970s, when a mathematician, or mathematician, a climatologist mathematician here actually at MIT by the name of Ed Lorenz, discovered that there are numerical equations which describe the atmospheres for which um, you, you cannot make predictions. He discovered this in a most interesting fashion. He was, these were early days of computers and he was using a rather simple computer to integrate a rather simple equation. And then uh, he tried uh, just doing it again and he found he got a different answer. And the reason was the computer itself had change the initial conditions infinitesimally. I mean, computers are not infinitely accurate. And if you're not infinitely accurate, you're just going to get different results. And uh, he investigated this and discovered, rediscovered chaos. And he gave it this wonderful name, the so-called butterfly effect, which is a butterfly flying in uh, Brazil could cause a hurricane in North America. So this was the rediscovery of chaos, and it became a very important area of dynamics and sort of revolutionized the studies of dynamical systems. It became the subject of a best-selling book called Chaos II, written by a chap called James Glick uh, sometime in the 80s. What has that got to do with atomic physics? Not very much, because atomic physics is the subject of atoms, microscopic atoms, not global weather systems or mechanical systems. But it does raise a question. How do atomic systems behave in conditions where the classical motion would be chaotic? By the classical motion being chaotic, one means that one is looking in the realm of atomic phenomena at very, very high quantum numbers where Bohr's correspondence principle says that the motion should reflect classical motion at that point. There should be a natural connection between quantum and classical motion when you deal with very high quantum numbers. He used that principle, the correspondence principle, to develop his theory for the hydrogen atom in 1913. So it's a very powerful theory. If you take an atom and excite an electron to a very, very high state, follows basically uh, the simple laws of quantum mechanics. It also behaves very much like what you'd expect from classical physics too. The periods of the orbits are given by Kepler's laws and such. It's what we call a semi-classical system. It's a proton attracting an electron, but the electron is at such high distances, the difference in motion between the different quantum states is very, very small. That's called the semi-classical regime. Just the atom by itself is never chaotic, but if you put a field on it, for instance, a magnetic field or an electric field, then it becomes, the classical motion becomes chaotic. And the question is, what is the quantum behavior of the system? It's a provocative question because 
I said that chaos is motion in which the infinitesimal change in initial conditions totally changes the behavior. In quantum mechanics, you cannot make infinitesimal changes. Quantum mechanics smooths things out. You have the uncertainty principle. You cannot change your, your position and velocity by sort of incremental you know, infinitesimal amounts. You have the uncertainty principle governing it. So you'd expect rather different type of behavior. So this became a subject of interest to a great many people in, in the 80s. In, I was doing research on Rydberg atoms at the time, and we, we were taken up by this question. So we started doing experiments. When we do experiments, we can study the atoms in the regime where we know quantum mechanics holds very well. And then we go into the regime where we know the classical motion is chaotic. And we were really quite baffled as to what would happen altogether. In quantum mechanics, you have very well-developed energy levels and spectral lines. Would this all disappear when you get into the chaotic region? I mean, we're, we're very excited the first time we looked and found out, no, the energy levels still exist there. Uh, looking back, that's a rather naive supposition, but we were really puzzled by it. So what you get are very patterns of energy levels, but they get very complex. And they look more and more disorderly. So you can go deeply into these regimes of classical chaos and still see energy levels, but they look a bit like spaghetti. However, it turns out, it was discovered that even within this spaghetti-like behavior, there are regularities. And these regularities correspond to, um, they, they correspond to periodic orbits which continue to exist even in the presence of chaos. A number of theorists discovered this theoretically and then some experimenters looked and we looked and we found that they're there. And in fact, Poincaré had also pointed this out that even when systems are totally chaotic, there are some motions of the system which are periodic, which should occur over and over again. So we looked and we found that indeed you can see these periodic orbits in a chaotic system. Well, that's kind of an interesting idea because um, if you try to find those orbits using just classical methods, you'd have a very difficult time. The chaotic systems can be so unstable that if you just try to numerically hunt out certain periodic orbits in them, they become impossibly difficult to do just because it's chaotic. But nature does it for you. So nature is acting, uh, well, the quanta, it's a, becoming a, a kind of bizarre quantum computer. It's a quantum system which computes classical periodic orbits in regions of chaos. And um, we learned a lot about these orbits. Um, you can probe the classical behavior of this system using quantum mechanical methods, finding regularities in the motion which you, which you could not find otherwise. So in this sense, uh, quantum mechanics has come to the rescue of chaos. At least it tells us something about the chaotic systems. And the, about the only thing you really know about these chaotic systems, which is interesting, are the existence of these orbits. So uh, we were just trying to find out what quantum mechanics could tell us. Turns out it could tell you a great deal. As we pursued our studies of quantum chaos, and others did too, it became increasingly perplexing as just what it was we were looking for. What is the question we're trying to answer? Well, one answer is uh, what are the characteristics of a quantum system which reflect the fact that the classical motion is chaotic? And we do have an answer for that right now. The more deep question is that in principle that quantum mechanics does not have room for chaos. If you look at any system which is sort of a finite system in a box. If you look at the quantum mechanical solutions for this system, they're all periodic. You take superpositions of, of wave functions, each of which is oscillating in its own frequency. No matter how many you take, the net result is always a periodic motion. Now, you don't have in general periodic motions in 
chaotic systems. There may be some special cases, but most general motion is not. So it would seem that quantum mechanics is incapable of describing classical chaos. But quantum mechanics underlies classical mechanics, we like to believe. It should be able to, it should be able to describe any classical motion we see. And yet here we come to a conundrum where in principle it would seem not well suited. So really having a, a lucid explanation of this, really trying to understand it sort of remains on the books. Um, one of the leaders in the field, um, uh, Michael Berry, a very fine uh, wave physicist from England, uh, introduced the term quantum chaology instead of quantum chaos. And I think it's a good term, which means those quantum phenomena which are associated with classical motion, but it isn't really chaos itself. However, the term qu quantum chaos has stuck and people are still puzzled by what it means.